hello guys welcome back again to bod tv but in this video pastor jerry is a give an emotional message about how his dearly beloved mother died and how he got to know who his father was mm. in his words he said please take care of your mother and he shared a very emotional tears he went further to say that without his mother he wouldn't be the great man of god he is today Kudos to all mothers out there and thank you so much, Pastor Jerry AZ. I had gone out, I was very young, and I had gone out to, you know, play with the other children. And so, I don't know what happened. So one of the children started calling me, Bastard! Bastard! Go, bastard! Go and call your father. Go and call your father. And I went back and I told my mother that that boy that lives at 18 told me, called me a bastard. I should go and call my father. My mother said to me, I did it when I didn't know God. He said, but I know God now. He said, what they called you is what they think of you. But what he called you is not who you are. My mother said to me, from today, God is your father. Listen to what my mother said. My mother said to me that his own father cannot give him everything he wants because his own father does not have everything. He says, but your own father has everything and can give you everything. From that day till today, I don't even care who is who or who is not who. And I want to use this to encourage every single parent here. Never feel I can't raise a great child. Never feel that my children cannot turn out right. Look at Pastor Jerry. And the truth is that it doesn't even matter what happened when you were in ignorance that belongs to yesterday it doesn't even matter how you failed that was in your yesterday but what matters is who you are right now take your seat i remember my mother reminding me when i got in i became a people in our church then called the prayer warriors and all of that so and I got in I became part of the prayer warriors now the demons I say it all the time that demons now are very digital you know and all. at the time at that time those demons very analog demons they are not in a hurry they are not in a they do all kinds of things there's a lot of drama and all of that it is not now then in that for mature, they used to pack mad people for us Mark mad people and everybody had their own consignment of mad person so as you are coming they are writing like your name and all of that jerry has three mad people under him so and the thing is that it was a church where there was so much i mean growing up in the right place helps you a lot where you don't have to explain why the demons did not live they say that your spirituality has gone down if you do not produce evidence of how the demons have left those people. So it was literally a deliverance ministry and then this was exactly what we're doing. My mother was not in that prayer warriors department. She was not. But every night, my mother would wake me up and tell me to come for midnight prayer. I remember my mother waking me up one night. I told her I cannot pray that today's own I cannot pray that I'm, I'm very tired. So I slept off. The next thing I heard was Tawai. And that sleep left me. And my mother told me that, I'm paraphrasing, I'm not saying it exactly, that who goes for war in the morning and sleeps through the night? If I say to you, for the over 15 years of my life, 
I don't sleep at night just because. And NSPPD had not yet come up at the time. So when people sit back and say, oh, this is uh, what we are doing is enjoyment. I look at them and I laugh. I am sold out for this. I wish I will even have the time. When you pray through the night and you do ministry in the morning, the puzzle, I mean, my wife will tell you, my wife will tell you this has been our life all to the time we've been married. And then you pray and then you do. And I mean, what? I mean, it's, it's been that way. And I want to tell you, it was my mother that started this thing. He said, you cannot have war in the morning and you are sleeping in the night. She pushed me into what it means to be an intercessor. She pushed me what it means to pray and all of that. Let me say this. I'm sure in my mother's mind, she didn't know. Will this stick with this child? Will he forget it at some point? Would it be, don't call your children children. When you relate with your children, you are not speaking to their mind. You are talking to their spirit. A child can be distracted, acting distracted, you know, and all of that. Please don't allow the distraction to distract you. You are speaking to the spirit of the child. When your children are asleep, open the scriptures, read over their lives. Declare over their lives. No matter what your children are doing, speak. My mother was a master in prophetic action. And I said it at the last minute women's program where I was speaking and I said to them, my mother would, while she is frying in the, in the kitchen and all of that, in a local kitchen, our local kitchen, you know, with all that fire and all of that. So when I come, I come into the kitchen, my mother would drag a stool, you know, those uh, kitchen stools, you know, in the kitchen and told me that I should sit at the seat of the kings. That I should sit at the seat of the kings. That this thing I am sitting now, where I am sitting now, is the seat of everything is prophecy for my mother she prophesied over everything things that made sense things that did not make sense everything is prophetic people of god every mother here you have the pictures of your children prophesy if you find their clothes anywhere prophesy anything that is happening prophesy and i don't forget and i just remembered it ordinary wooden kitchen stool my mother called it seat of the kings why don't you call your own child's dress dress of the kings find something and because they cannot fail they cannot fail they cannot fail if you see when your own destiny came under attack you can imagine what your children are going through right now and half of it they are not telling you half of it they are not telling you and i say this because my mother taught me and my mother will tell me don't eat when you go to people's house you know that time don't eat when you go to people's it's not and my mother will come back and then call me and say to me you ate i said i did not eat and then, because I don't used to lie, but I will lie. I said, I did not eat. So if I told my mother I did not eat, my mother should agree that I did not. My mother said to me, you ate. My mother would tell me the time I ate. My mother would tell me what I ate. And that was the one that I registered in my heart. I picked it up with my daughter. As my daughter was going to secondary school about three years ago. I told her, let me remind you, I can see. Anything you do, God will tell me. And she thought it's a joke. Now there we did now. Anything going on, God will tell me. And so I remember her going back to school after her first year. And I said to her, what is that one thing you will always remember about daddy? He said to me, daddy said, anything I do, God will tell you. And I remember her guardian making reference to that and all of that, that Samara will say to her and all of that, that my daddy can hear God though. 
I cannot do anything now because if I do, God will tell my father. Beyond that, father, mother, can you have a relationship with God that God can tell you when your children are struggling? Can God even tell you what is about to happen in the future so that you can forestall it? It will not meet you like an emergency. Am I communicating? You know, there are things that happen in my life now. I know I pray, but there's some that will happen. I will tell myself, that's my mother's prayer. I know I pray, but there are things that will happen. When you see the way they will play out, I sit back and say, Kai, that is a broken woman's prayer. That is a broken, there was something, my, I mean, I've always shared this with you, how my mother, I got a job with a World Bank project on HIV and AIDS. I, and then I had even gotten a job with the UN. And I, I went to show my mother and I said to my mother, our life has changed. I said, our life has changed. My mother was the most important person to me. So I went to tell my mother, now you will live in my house with this salary. I will change everything. I was excited telling my mom this, telling my mom that. My mom was so uninterested. I told her why. She said, everything you are telling me is not what God told me about you. <laughs> Let me tell you, parents, some things your children will celebrate. You need to pray about them and be sure that most of them will not die in it. Pray about them. Not how exciting it is means that God is there. And God, my mother told me, that's not what God told me. That's not what you should do. Hey, hey. As in, it's not what God told you. I told my mother, that thing, we quarreled that day. I quarreled with my mother. I said, it's not what God told you. What God told you is that way. And then, and you're telling me to go into full-time ministry. Which example do I have around me to show me that if I go into full-time ministry, nothing will happen to me? Which example? No example. Say it's not what God told me. That I will serve God. I will serve God. If you plan, that's to my, my dialect. I would have spoken it for she would, she would say yeah, that I should serve God. That what God is saying, I should forget everything and serve God. I should serve God. I should serve God. I should serve God. I should serve. So I asked my mother, I said, So if I'm serving God and I get hungry and all that, he said, if I die, I'll go to heaven. <laughs> because she too, she did not have an example of serving God that you will be fine serving God. So she didn't have that example. All she knows is that just do the right thing, serve God, and then die and go to heaven. To my mother, not me. And that's how I kept doing until my mother died. But see one very striking thing. My mother took ill. And then when I came to see her, the night, the night before she died, so I came to see her. So... Whenever I come, I'm always the one praying for her, praying for her because she was sick. So, but that night, my mother said she wanted to pray for me. That I should kneel down, let her pray for me. So, and I know that my mother began to pray. For an hour, seven minutes, my mother was praying. She was crying. She was praying. She was crying. She was praying. She was crying. She was crying. And when she was done, she told me, nothing will happen to you. And my mother was full of smiles. And when I was ready to go, she now called me by my Igbo name. And she says, she said to me, that she did I know that this has sickness. That if I had what it took, that she would still not be sick. So I told her, that I'm trying, that I don't know what else to do, that what is happening to you is not uh, something that will kill somebody tomorrow, that I'm trying that medications, we're giving medications and all. And all. She said, no, that she be, I know that I've not reached that height in the spirit where I can speak to this her sickness and it will go. She said to me, no matter what you are doing, 
try and get to that height where sicknesses like mine can hear your voice and go. And as far as I was concerned, I just felt like, you know, she likes talking about God, everything, God, God, God. I told her, yes, I will get to that height where sickness is that. So I was getting offended. I said, look at this woman. What is the trouble I'm going through for you? You are, you are not appreciated. It's now I should get to the height. Come and carry me to the height. Let me reach the height. And the next day, I heard my mom was dead. The only word that came back to me was get to the height so that sicknesses like mine can hear your voice. And I made up my mind that whatever it would take, I wish I were me now. My mother would not have died. But it's not late. So what I could not do for her, I would do it for my generation. So you know when people say to me, calm down, you're being too extra. You don't have to do all these prayers every night and all of that. I would never want it to be said that a man prayed and demons ridiculed your voice. Never. So sir, it's about how your spirit man is stratified. There's a place where you grow. There are things that cannot withstand your voice. Many years ago, this voice could not make it happen. But I'm glad today that it's an endless journey of continuing. So my, my passion for what I'm doing, my mother was my treasure. And I want to tell every young person here, please take care of your mother. They are not perfect. But love your mother. You probably wouldn't know how valuable your mom is until you wake up and not find your mother anymore. Love your mother. Take care of your mother. They don't have to ask you for you to give them. I know they can be quite a handful most times. They can complain. They can do. Just be nice. Be kind to your mother. Please be kind to your mother. Be kind to your parents as well. Be kind to remember your parents. Remember, remember them. Show them how much you care and how much, you know, you know, if, if God blesses you in whichever way, let your parents feel it. Let them feel that God has blessed you. Let them know that God, you know, you see, if anything happens to you, the side cheeks won't be there. If anything happens to you, I'm telling you the truth. It's so easy how people move on. But your parents will have a hard time to move on. It will scar them so much. I wish I spent more time. I didn't know my mom was going to die. I wish I spent more time. I wish I did more. And that's what I keep saying to myself. But the most important thing is, on the Mother's Day, I, I had my message prepared. And I, as soon as I sat down through the service, my heart was just in a mixed place. Not mixed because I remember my mother. No, that's not it. But I just wondered, a woman who didn't hear any message about parenting, a woman who didn't hear anything about how to raise a child like this could go out of a woman who was even flawed in her own right but still turns around to do something that could make what about us with all we're hearing with everything 
God raised us all up to raise a different generation, a different breed from us. And it's easy to say, God, bring my spouse, bring the man that wants to marry me now, bring my wife right now. Are you even prepared to be that mother? Do you even have a prayer life that can sustain? I'm not talking about transactional prayer life. With your prayer for right now because there's something you desire that God should do. But hey, away from that, do I, do I have a system? Am I, do I know that this thing I'm getting into is a ministry of its own? And the proof of the ministry is how each and every one of these people will turn out. Forget what, don't forget what I said when my mother said, what I cannot do, which should be a prayer for every parent and would-be parent. Lord, what I can't do for my children, please be that for them. When I'm not there, what I can teach, please teach my children. What I can give them, please give them. And my mother said, that's the reason why I will hold your legs every night and I will pray and I will cry because she knew she was flawed and she knows there are things that she can't do. On a day like this, mothers, fathers, I want you to realize that nothing beats a mother or a father who is connected to the throne of God and who is ready to make the needed sacrifice. Every time I see people getting married and we celebrate testimonies on NSPPD, I always would ask myself another question. Are they ready for this ministry called parenting? What has God told them? What do they know about their children? Are they going to parent a child according to you are a child? Or am I parenting you according to your destiny? It's an error for your children to turn out to be teenagers right now. And you don't have one word. God has spoken to them. A few light years ago, I had said to my daughter, I told my daughter what God said to me about her. And I told her that it's something that you need to pray. You know? And this one, she came back on holiday. She told me, Daddy, let me share a dream I had with you. And she shares a dream with me. And she said, when she finished the dream, I said, wow. Wow, it's a dream that you need to pray about. And she reminded me and she said, Daddy, do you remember what you told me? I just him. I said, I remembered, but I thought you had forgotten. He said, I've not forgotten, Daddy. And she said, please pray for me. I knew we're making a journey. It will all come together. 